That must be Trevor's new Peterbilt pickup. It's cute. <laughs> We're at Bales Hay again. So this is a, it's a Toyota pickup. Correct. Uh -oh. Yeah, something like yeah. that. That's amazing to get that clean. Yeah, I don't understand how they could keep it that clean even. Check the oil and drop a little oil on the. <laughs> <laughs> get a little salt underneath the hood. How are you just floating like that? My check engine light's on, it sucks. On what? That's a good question. I, I can't see anything that you're driving. <laughs> you see the wheels? Never heard that joke before, huh? Did you see the other side? You got different wheels on different, different wheels. sides? Ooh. So what are you testing? Which ones you like more? Which ones? Yeah. Yeah? Yes. So these are the all black. Oh, no. Oh. Hmm. I think we're going to see a crop duster. We'll see you later. Good to meet you. How good can you guys hold your breath? <laughs> Isla, look at this airplane coming. Here he comes. Crop duster. Watch him, watch him. What's he spraying right now? Steward. Incredible Steward? Form. Yeah, insecticide. Insecticide? What type of plane is that? That's a 802 air tractor. 802 air tractor. 800 gallons. So how many, roughly, how many acres can he, can he cover with 800? At three gallons an acre, we can do 250 acres. Okay. Can he bounce the wheels off the top of the van? Maybe. I'm gonna ask him. All right. See if he's comfortable with that. It's a rental. It's a rental. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you want to do? Push mud in the creek? The channel. Canal? Is that a canal, Trevor? That's a uh, ditch. That's a ditch. It comes off the canal? That comes off a lateral. Oh, yeah. The lateral comes off the canal, and the ditch comes off the lateral. So then Which what? sometimes, the ditch is what actually feeds the field. The lateral feeds water to the ditch that feeds the uh, field. Sometimes laterals are ditches, too. It's confusing. It's almost like Spanish. <laughs> Yeah, those are new. These tractors are new since you were here last. The steamers are new since you were here last as well. Yeah, you guys have upgraded some stuff. Yeah. So this is the, how do you say it, Staley West? Staley West, yeah. Staley West. It's you, the you same bet, steamer we guys. saw. Yeah. Yeah, out this in said, California. I think they had the Cleveland, but this one's the 331 Dew Point. So it's not the Cleveland. It's the, It's different. It's different. Is the it, Cleveland it, bigger or smaller? You can tell by the way it is. Yeah, that it's not the Cleveland. It's not the Cleveland. <laughs> But this is a small bale steamer. It's much smaller than the big, big bale steamer. It actually has a few different points. The big bale steamer, <laughs> it injects steam in about four different points. I think it's four. This just does three. Okay. Would you like to see that or no? You don't have to. No pressure. No, yeah. I don't want you to feel awkward or. A, no, I want to know. see it. No, you know, you know, I can tell they, you. Don't. They want to see. I it. I can tell you don't want to see it. All right, they we won't. We won't do it. Here. There's three points where the steam comes out. One down here. Yep. Right like a nozzle. Going in. Yep. Two on the back side of these, and three right here as it, on the bottom. So they're actually adding a really, really small amount of weight. Does it come out that much when you're bailing? Uh, it depends. If, if it's really dry out, yeah. So you guys are actually adding a really little bit of moisture to the material as you bail it. Yes, and it just depends how dry and windy it is. If it's dry and windy, we're putting 95% uh, uh, steam on that. If we've got a little bit of dew, natural dew, we might only be running 25-30%. Because you got the opposite problem as everybody else. Yeah. It actually gets too dry, yes. and they'll lose material as they're bailing, well, so the this helps it get fall stickier. Off. Yeah, this helps keep the leaf retention. So they have upgraded to the fence, the fence tractors here. Oh yeah, look at that. So this is very similar to the Challenger tractor we had a few years ago, but you guys had before, you had smaller, older deer two, tractors? Two-wheel drive deers, yep. Yeah, how do you like these? Uh, I really like them, the air ride cabs. My guys really like them. I've very, I haven't driven them very much, so I can't, it's hard for me to say, but they really like them. Yeah, I'll bet. So This is a Cadillac. There's a lot of stuff going on here. This controls the steamer. You can control the top or the bottom and how, what percent you want to run. This controls the baler. 
This controls the, this is the reader for the moisture content. The cameras, because we can't see anything behind us. Yep. This is the, the, the brakes, because that steamer's heavy, so it's got its own brake setup. Oh, it does. This is the scale system, so we know how much our bales are weighing, and that's for the tractor. Sure. It's like a, that's a lot of stuff just to bale hay, right? It's I mean, as bad as a carb planter. It yeah. is, yeah, yeah, there's a lot going on there. found you. I want a horse. You what? You want a horse? No, you don't need a horse. Oh, I bet you do. You want a what? See the cows. All right, let's go see the cows. We'll just go ahead and open up Trevor's gate here. Go ahead. Go on in. Help yourselves. We lost track of Trevor. I don't actually know where he is. So. I think we can fit a cow in a suitcase on the way home. Uh, not unless we process it. You see all those horses? Isla loves horses. He's a big boy. Let's go this way. Oh, you want to go this way? That's what I meant, this way. That guy right there. He's a cute little guy. You think that's funny? I wouldn't mess with him. We'll just leave you be. Yeah, he's coming up to see you? Wow, that's a pretty one, huh? Hey, buddy. You got a soft nose? Here's a I can't feel him. Yeah. Oh, let me touch him. Come here, horse. Oh my gosh. There you oh, go. They like you, Isla. You think they have names? Like Buttercup? Buttercup and Milk Dud? No, Oreo. I'm Oreo. Oh, there's another one. Yeah. Well, These ones don't <laughs> want to come up as much. These ones are power Which one's your favorite, Isla? That one, unicorn. The white one? Unicorn. Unicorn? Unicorn horse. I don't see a horn on it. Unicorn horse. Come on, do it, you wuss. Stand. Stand. Your ground, Trevor. <laughs> right. Right. He, he's not as tough as he was acting, huh? I didn't even have to get in there. He knows what's <laughs> up. Isla, what are you doing? You just can't keep her off the fence trying to pet that the horses. That's a herd? For sure. For sure. They're following each other. Isla, look at this. What is that? It's an egg. What kind? She asked Trevor? I don't know. Don't break it. Don't squeeze it. Let your sister hold it. Yeah, uh, it's probably a goat egg. Look what we Those found on the bale. sitting right up. Nice. They're going to stack this little old truck here. Basically the same thing as our Kenworths on the farm, but with a, a heck of a lot less rust. He does not want to run into the side of that truck and trailer. Pardon me. Do you have any gray from pond? <laughs> the guy loading next to those wheel fairings seems to be doing it a little more carefully than even Randy and I were. <laughs> Let's get a better look here. Oh, it even smells awesome. My gosh. It's an air powered air power pump? pump? Yep. It's, uh, this is actually a spray that break that stops it. You want to stop is that pump. normal? Yep. Like all spray plates. All spray plates have it. So well, they make a kit that make it hydraulically driven. But okay. It's, more efficient to do it this way, less wear and tear on the engine. So that is the pump, <coughs> wind-driven pump. Yes, sir. That runs the pump for the for the chemical. The chemical. And then everything from this firewall to the edge of the cockpit is the tank. It's 800 gallons. So we hot fuel everything. Oh, you will hot fuel hot these fuel, too. Hot load, everything fast, fast, fast. Time's money. So. Yep. So is that like a, just a two-inch banjo valve deal? Three inch. Three. Three inch, and then our pump pumps 550 gallons a minute. So you can load this thing in two minutes. Two minutes. Will you fuel every time? You won't, every will time. you? He every takes, time he you takes really? 120 gallons every time we give him the least amount of fuel he needs. Yep. For the job. Sure. So he can carry more material, so the airplane's not overweight. How much gotcha. fuel did you say? 120 gallons every load. Yep. It'll burn. It thing burns about 98 gallons an hour. <laughs> Turbine. Wow. And another yeah, don't run into that. 802 air tracker. What are you guys doing with this one? This is just for fire bombing. Oh, for, oh. This is for fire, fire retardant, okay. So it's probably not a good idea just to start a fire to give us an example of how these work. 
I'm not gonna do that. I can hold a road I mean, flare it's on for YouTube. YouTube. We can start in that hayfield on fire. I think Trevor owns that hayfield. Yeah, yeah, Trevor won't mind. He won't care. He's usually we'll up just for have a good the kids time. hold a road flare out there. Yeah. Simulate the fire. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna put it out. So oh. these all, all these planes are basically for fire suppression. Yes. That's what you're doing with these. You're not spraying. Hundred percent. You're putting out fires. Yeah. If it's anything like our equipment, it's got a dead battery. <laughs> <laughs> Get the charger. So apparently they're going to load that up with water and do a practice drop like they're kind of putting out a fire. They're going to dump it over the runway on the go, but I think that's going to be 15, 20 minutes and we don't have that kind of time because we're running. We're going to drive to a, uh, to a big dairy. Paloma Dairy, I believe is what Trevor said. We got a lot going on. Uh, Alan, can you can you tell us quickly where we are? So we're at Sunset Farms in Paloma Dairy. My dad and I have three brothers, so those four brothers run the farm and dairy. We uh, milk about 7,600 cows, 16,000 total head of Holsteins, and then we have about 7,000 acres of irrigated cropland that we farm as well here. We've got a 140 milking machines in the front barn and 80 on the back, so we're milking about a thousand cows an hour right now. So when you say like 140 up front, is it a 70 by 70? 70 it's cows on each side? Two double 35s. Two double 35s. In one barn. We can go over there and look at it. Awesome. Let's check it out. Trevor, are you going to milk a cow? I sure will. So these are our Kloss R&D tractors right now. Look at the tires on that. Is there air in that tire? There is, so it's the sidewall goes in instead of out. Corrals, so these have free stalls, and we did this to capture like 95% of the manure. We just finished a, a renewable natural gas plant that we're capturing the manure and making uh, renewable natural gas for commercial vehicles. And uh, So you're capturing the gases from the manure? Yeah, about 115,000 gallons of manure a day we're collecting with some noon vacuum trucks that are running around here somewhere. I saw one. And then how do you, is there physical product you have to transport for vehicle use? So there's a couple different ways. We can flush, so I, we'll go over there and look at it, but we can flush it down the drain and we can put it in a covered lagoon, or we can run a vacuum, like a squeegee, a big Zamboni, and we take the solid manure, which is about 12% solids, and put it in complete mixed tanks, and those also make methane. So there's two different ways to make methane. That's a totally different Zamboni than I'm used to. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> this is where the used ones go. Might be flippery. Okay. So this, you just, you need a better plumber. Is that the deal? There's a, there's a plastic gasket in there that. Oh, it's not even tight. Oh, that's slippery. It's got soap in it. Well, right now, you said they're cleaning a tank out. Yeah. So we'll see that in here. There's okay. a huge wrench next to it, Alan. We missed it. Yeah. Maybe, is it an <laughs> Allen wrench? <laughs> I'm going to need ed full editorial. <laughs> that tank is, water's coming out of that tank. Water is 15,000 gallons out of it. goes up above the roof. 15,000 gallons. And it's washing that line and coming back and spraying it inside. So, Seven degrees, and how often do the tanks get washed? We're filling every tank, empty them, and wash them every day. Every single day. Yeah, each each tank is for a shift. And so there's three 15,000 gallon tanks right here. So this tank right here is 30, 33 degrees. There's 50,000 pounds of milk in there. It's like 33 degrees. So this that bar one is about two thirds full, 82,000 pounds. That's awesome. We'll put 3,000 pounds of milk in here every day, approximately. So, so the guys that sit on the buckets and milk the cows then, do they have to carry every bucket up the ladder to dump it in the tank? It's a, it's a tough job. But I wouldn't uh, believe that. I bet they have a rope to pull it up. Oh, they use a pulley. Yeah. yeah. I have been up there once, but you'll see them milking right over here. 104 degrees right there. That's what it comes out of the cow at. Yeah, so it's coming from each receiver through a, a strainer, paper filter, and then it's going right here, this is in the tank at 34 degrees. From it coming out of the cow, it's in the tank, filtered 33 degrees. Filtered and cooled down yeah. 70 degrees. Do you have coolers in the tank too then? No. It's, it goes in cool enough and leaves yeah. fast enough. It's just insulated, it's insulated. Yeah. Here we go. This is where the action happens. 
So there's 35 cows on each side here, and there's a second run over there, second parlor. So we got 140 in here getting milked at any time. So are you, you're bringing them all in at once and releasing them all at once? It's not a constant cycle? So there, there's about 14 pens of about 350 cows. They're coming in in groups of 350, splitting into the four uh, lanes, and then they're going back together. So there's, we'll go in the back later, you'll see there's kind of two lanes. So there's a lane coming in and a lane going out, constantly cows coming in and out. You see the milk going right in right there. Yep. See that, Isla? See the milk going in? Yeah. So there he used iodine on the udders. I believe that that's to clean them up afterwards. So there they go. Watch them, Isla. There they go. Hello, Betsy. So now they'll they'll head out that way, right? Yeah, there's an exit lane coming out there. You can see the next ones are coming down the lane right here to get milk. Oh yeah, they're already coming in. Yep. Creatures of havoc, so they are on a schedule and they don't let them start moving a bunch of their late. So if you've never been around it before, a lot of people would probably be surprised to see how eager they actually are to come in and get milked all they the time. Get milked. Yeah, they want to be in here. Oh, so they're like not mad to be. No, they walk in, they, they get used to that schedule and they want to come in here oh, and be for milked. Some reason I thought they were always bad. No. It feels good to get milked. So there he's, he's use, is that an iodine spray he's using on there now to clean yeah, him ahead of time? Yeah, and then he's checking the milk, make sure that it's good quality, and that's also stimulating the cow to let down that oxytocin. Okay. So then the goal is for him to come back and hang this machine th about 30 seconds later. Okay. Yep, once that's done, it'll release on its own. See, there, there goes a couple. So now he's going to hook these up. There, that one released. Now those ones got released. What do you think, Isla? Is it cool? I want to go see the cows down there. Can I walk? Yeah, down go? There? I think we'll get down there in a little bit here. Here come the new ladies. She's curious. Cows are curious. And she's never seen me before, so she's just wondering what I'm doing here. I'm I'm a YouTuber. My name is Zach. I'm here to watch you get milked. Hello. <laughs> They're going fast? You can see the milk coming through, huh? This is the second parlor here. So they got another 70 cows being milked at all times here. Yeah, there you can see in the middle, those are the cows that are done, huh? Yep. And they just haven't, they haven't walked out yet. Most of them have walked out on this side. Yeah. Honestly, you can hardly even, like you don't even smell cows in here. Right. You can smell the milk more than anything, I think. Yeah, you smell that milk out. It's gonna be really loud in here, so hold your questions to the end. Okay. Those are the milk tanks that we fill up every day. So these are the three tanks that we saw the back side of. These are the pumps here that are running all the vacuum to get that milk into the tanks. Water heating for washing, air compressors from controls, and then chillers and power. Water store, half a million gallon water store. You use that about a little over a day's worth of water, and then about 850 kW generators. So everything has to be a backup generator. We really can't be down more than an hour. So we're, you know, I'm on call. We have technicians on call because we're running 24/7 Christmases and you know, all the time, yeah. all the time. So a lot of that water is being recycled into oh, the yeah. system. So all you're not just burning through a half gallon or a no, half no. million gallons. I mean, it's for drinking. It's also for washing. And then we will, after we wash and, and rinse the lanes, we'll pump it back and we'll flush that manure down. It will go back through the RNG plant methane digester capture the energy off it. We're also irrigating. We have about 30 miles of pipeline out to about 4,000 of our acres that we irrigated as well. So it's getting used at least three times, most, you know, sometimes four or five times. Before it's being irrigated out. Yeah, so it'll displace well water as well. So whatever water I use here is less water I'll use just for irrigating. So it's, it's, uh, it's all usable. 
This is this is did say that again. It's a cow hospital. This is. Yeah, it's a maternity area, and also any sick cows we treat them here. All the cows we see on the left here will have a calf in the next two weeks. These are all in the next two weeks. Yeah, they're all pregnant. Congratulations, ladies. I hope it goes well. Other back, so that has a seven on her. So the seventh, that cow had a calf. The eighth, oh, that's the day. Okay. Today. And then how long do they produce milk for after that? So, um, the, the goal is to get her to have another calf in about 12 to 13 months. So she's going to make milk for two months less than that, 11 months maybe. Okay. What percent of heifer calves can you have by, by sexing the artificial? So we do all AI, all artificial insemination. If you just use natural semen, it's about 50-50, but you can use 90% sex semen as well and get 90% female calves out of them. The fertility is lowered a little bit because you're running that semen through a, a sorting machine. Okay, is that what you guys do? We do it on specific cows that are very high high fertility and high genetic potential. We'll okay. do sex on it. And you said you sell the bull calves? We sell bull calves at Dale. We don't, we don't have a feedlot here at all. Hello, little ladies. You can see those are getting pretty big. Those are probably around 200 pounds and they're they're getting old enough that they can go into group housing after this. So you keep them in a, a hutch like that or a crib, like you keep your baby in a crib. You keep them safe from predators so you can treat each one and individually monitor them. Um, it's for their best good, just like you keep a baby in a, in a crib for, for its um, health. Yep, safety. yep, you can monitor them. So right here where those yellow curbs are, we bring those Zamboni loads of manure in there and it gets pumped into these giant tanks behind there and that's where the, the solids of the process go. The liquids gets pumped into this covered lagoon off to the right. Can I drive right by here? Yeah, go right. This is the manure coming after the digestion process so if we went and smelled that it'll smell like composted manure um, like you buy at Home Depot. So it's, it's, it's dried? Yeah, you're, we're squeezing the water out of it and putting the water into the, the covered lagoon over here. So you can see that's what I was talking about earlier, the recycled water. That's water that's bringing solids. The solids are dropping in, we'll pump those into the tank. The liquid is going to get pump, pumped into the, uh, the covered lagoon and we're capturing the methane off of both processes. 17 million gallon lagoon there that's lined and covered. And so you can see how it's lifting up over there like a big hot air balloon that's all methane underneath that cover so that's all liquid and gas in there liquid is about the height of my knee right here okay everything above that is all methane that's lighter than air it's, it's lifting that cover up those those um look like those bouncy things in, like... for the kids in the back this pit right here is literally full of cow fart right the methane yep. that, that's what you're capturing is the cow fart not cow poop well it's the liquid it's the gas part of the cow poop. It's Wait, the stinky then, stuff. And then do they like sell the farts like the ladies online? <laughs> well, <laughs> ladies in a jar. I think I think it's different <laughs> than the ladies <laughs> on different websites. Each each jar of cow fart comes with a picture of its feet. You can watch. You can watch Fight Club. I think we better yeah. check over Onyx's phone tonight. <laughs> yeah. probably, no, I'm probably I'm probably to tell Daryl, the plant manager, where, what we're doing. Security guys after us. Coming out of a cow. And, so that's uh, raw manure. Yeah. Really? And it stays in there for about 20, 21 days. Um, so we're putting manure in and pulling manure yeah, out. Why it does it stay in there so long to try to get that methane out? Is so you're, you're, you're not letting oxygen in there, so it's anaerobic. And the bugs that are, do not like oxygen go in there and they break down the volatile solids, the stuff inside that manure, and, and the byproduct of that is methane and CO2. Ah, so the bugs are breaking it down. Yeah. Really Do you put bugs in it? It's a natural process. It's yeah. a natural process. It's they they find it. Giant cow stomach right there. It's the continuation of breaking down that feed oh, into energy. Farts. So the bugs are in there already. Yeah. They're the what's the word I'm looking for? Bacteria? Yeah, bacteria. We're pulling biogas, which is 60% methane, the rest is CO2, and we're scrubbing the H2S hydrogen sulfide off it running it through methane or membranes, air liquid membranes to, to take the CO2 away and we're getting it to 98% methane which is pipeline quality gas, compressing it up to 400 psi 
and putting it into the pipeline straight ahead of us. So they'll they'll actually send the tanker trucks to hook up and, and pick that up. No, this is this is high pressure pipeline right here. This is going to go into the pipeline system, displace natural gas in Arizona, and that natural gas that gets displaced in Arizona will go to California and it'll fill up a UPS truck in California. So you're already tapped into all that. Yeah. They're not trucking it out of here. No. So how often have you had to throw one of those lifeguard safety rings into the Oh, pit to I didn't somebody? even notice that. Never. Oh, yeah, we but... laugh because the safety guy told us we need to have those out there, but if you fall into the water, the cover's on top of you, the ring's not going to do anything. But right. At least you've got them. We've got them. You can run up there 10 minutes later and chuck it in there for them. <laughs> yeah. It can land on, the, uh, on top of the Much tarp. less the fact that there's methane under there and you've suffocated you, as well. You'd be so. long gone. <laughs> so do your kids ever want to come out here and bounce Why on that? there no smoking signs around here? We're not allowed to go out, oh, out there. I would imagine yeah. not, yeah. yeah. We lost Alan. Alan had to go on a, on a dinner date with his wife. So we lost him. We're kind of on our own here. But now that he's gone, how much do you suppose they invested into that digester system? Oh, $10,000? $20,000? Right, yeah. <laughs> Maybe more than that? <laughs> Maybe a touch. We're close. This is one of their choppers, the Dairy's choppers, and I hear Air Force jets flying around up there, so we want to make sure we're on our best behavior. A bombing range? A bombing range where they, where they do dog fights and do uh, AR warthogs, what are those called? AR-10? A-10s? A-10s. They'll, they'll dog fight them down there. Oh, that'd be cool. <laughs> that thing is working slugging all that green He's stuff using through all there. Horsepower. Yeah. I've been a lot of places, especially lately, but I'm not sure I've ever seen a view this cool. Me personally, I, I get sick of the mountains, but seeing them in the distance like that, I just this is cool. We're back at the dairy now. This is the pile that they're 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 bringing all that haylage to. Oh, I thought there was a truck coming, but this guy's packing it in, shaping it. How's it taste? Smells better than it tastes. <laughs> so he said he said something about 19 millimeters. Was that like a concave setting? Mm -hmm. That's like the uh, there's a cutter bar. Yeah. So the knife spin around and then there's a bar. So that's the distance between the knife and the bar. Okay. So the tighter that is, the smaller that will be. The smaller it cuts. Sure. Can you explain the science behind what he's doing and why here with the tractor? Well, he's he's pushing into a pile, and then he's he's pushing all the air out of it. Basically, Oxygen. just compacting it. So then they'll cover it. And it'll ferment. Yeah. So it's fermented. We'd have to go find, but it turns brown. It actually looks brown. Right. And, and if there's the oxygen in there, is what'll allow it to actually mold and rot. If there's no oxygen in there, it can't. It can't rot. So they want to pack the air out and get it to ferment. As much as possible. Yep. Well, see you later. See you later. Thanks, Trevor. See you guys. Bye, Trevor.